Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. We were discussing about the properties of discrete time systems in the last few videos and so far we learned about linearity and stability. Continuing from that, in this lecture we will learn about the next property which is invertibility. This lecture will be little longer as we will also see some specific examples which will help you understand the concept better. So, let's start our lecture. The definition of an invertible system is simple. A system is said to be invertible if it produces distinct output signals for distinct input signals. In other words, given two input signals, x1 of n and x2 of n, if x1 of n is not equal to x2 of n, then it must be true that y1 of n is not equal to y2 of n, where y1 of n and y2 of n are the corresponding outputs when x1 of n and x2 of n are given as inputs. This brings us to another equivalent definition of invertible systems. A system is said to be invertible if the input signal can be uniquely recovered from the output signal of the system. Said another way, invertibility means that given the output, there is only one input signal that could have caused it. There is one more definition for an invertible system. Now I understand that I am giving a lot of definitions. But please bear with me. It is important to know all these definitions. You will understand the importance of them by the end of the video. Ok, so the third way to look at it is in the context of cascade of systems. Here, a system is known as invertible if and only if an inverse system exists which when cascaded with the original system produces an output equal to the input to the original system. Ok, so what is an inverse system? Ok, listen carefully. An inverse system is that system which when provided with the output of the original system produces the input to the original system as output. Or in other words, it is a system which when provided with y of n as input produces x of n as output. Ok. Now let us see some examples on this topic to understand the concept better. Please pay close attention as each example shows a different approach to check the invertibility of the system. First question is to check whether the system y of n equal to 0 is invertible or not. Ok, we learned that an invertible system should produce distinct outputs for distinct inputs. Let us check if that is the case for our system. Here our system is y of n equal to 0. So no matter what input we give to the system, the system will always generate 0 as output as the output difference equation doesn't have input terms present in it. For example, let us provide 0 as input to the system. The output will be 0. If we give 1 as input, the output will again be 0. If we give 2, still we get 0 as output. As you can see, distinct inputs are not producing distinct outputs. Therefore, the system is non-invertible. Invertible. Let us now see another example. y of n is equal to magnitude of x of n. Here also, we will proceed just like before. Let the input be 1. Corresponding output will be magnitude of 1 which is equal to 1. Next, let us provide an input of minus 1. Corresponding output will be magnitude of minus 1 which is equal to 1. So, both 1 and minus 1 are producing the same outputs. Again, distinct inputs failed to produce distinct outputs. 
so this is again a non invertible system non invertible system moving to the third example we have y of n equal to x of 2n here we will take a different approach let us try to find the inverse of the system we have y of n equal to x of 2n replacing n with n by 2 we get y of n by 2 equal to x of 2 into n by 2 which is equal to x of n so our inverse system derived is w of n equal to y of n by 2 here i am simply using w of n instead of x of n to avoid confusion okay but think again is this really an inverse of our original system as per our definition when provided with y of n an inverse system should always give corresponding x of n as output that is w of n should be equal to x of n let us see if that is the case now consider this random series as input to the system as you have learned earlier in the dsp lecture series n equal to 0 is depicted by this arrow so x of 0 is 0 x of minus 1 is minus 1 x of 1 is 1 x of 2 is 2 and so on now let us give x of n as input to our system at n equal to 0 we have x of 0 which is 0 right corresponding y of 0 will be x of 2 into 0 which is x of 0 and we know that x of 0 is 0 so y of 0 will be 0 therefore the output of our so called inverse system will be w of 0 which is y of 0 by 2 which is y of 0 which is equal to 0 as we have seen here okay our output of inverse system is same as the input to the original system so far so good now let us look at the instant n equal to 1 the input is x of 1 which is equal to 1 corresponding y of 1 will be x of 2 into 1 which is x of 2 and x of 2 is 2 therefore y of 1 is equal to 2 output of our supposed inverse system is w of 1 which is equal to y of 1 by 2 but discrete system is defined only for discrete values of n so n equal to 1 by 2 is not defined therefore y of 1 by 2 is undefined okay as you can see w of 1 is not equal to x of 1 so inverse system does not exist for the system in question therefore as per our third definition of invertible systems we can say that this system is non invertible i hope that now you understood the significance of so many definitions of invertible systems i have given earlier moving to the next question we have y of n equal to sin n into x of n this is a very important example first let us make the input output table as before we will try giving numerical values as input so let us say x of n equal to 0 therefore y of n will be equal to sin n into 0 which is 0 okay so far everything is good here we don't know the value of sin n exactly 
when x of n equal to 0. This is because we don't know at which instance of n x of n is 0. Maybe x of minus 50 is 0. Maybe x of 10 is 0. We simply don't know. Okay. So, as we don't know the value of instance n, we can't find the value of sin n. That is why I have left sin n as it is. But since x of n is 0, overall y of n is 0 in this case. Now, let us take the next numerical value. Let it be 1. So, x of n is equal to 1 at some instance of n. Corresponding y of n is sin n. Now, let us take another value of x of n which is equal to 2 at some instance of n which we do not know. The output will be y of n equal to sin n into 2 which is 2 sin n. Seeing these three cases, you might think that this is an invertible system as each unique input is producing a unique output which are 0, sin n, 2 sin n, etc. But this is misleading as we cannot guarantee that sin n is different from 2 into sin n. For example, let us say x of n is 1 at the instance n when sin n is equal to 1. So, y of n is equal to 1. Also, let us say that x of n is 2 at the instance n when sin n is equal to 1 by 2. So, y of n will be equal to 2 into 1 by 2 which is 1. As you can see, y of n is equal to 1 for inputs x of n equal to 1 and x of n equal to 2. So, we have same output for two different inputs. This example showed us the drawback of using numerical values as input as it does not provide a guaranteed understanding of the nature of the system. So, in such cases, instead of numerical values, we should give standard signals like impulse or step signals as input. As an example, let us say x of n is equal to do of n. Output will be y of n equal to sin n into do of n. Now, there is a property of impulse signals x of n into do of n minus n0 equal to x of n0 into do of n minus n0. I have explained the reasoning behind this property in another short video. So please check that out if you have any doubt. Okay, let us use this property on our output signal. For that, let us write it as sin n into do of n minus 0. Comparing this with this, we know x of n is sin n here and n0 is 0. n0 is 0. Therefore, using this property, we can write it as sin of n0 and n0 is 0. So, we have sin of 0 into do of n minus n0 and n0 is again 0 so do of n minus 0 and this will be equal to 0 because sin 0 is 0. So when we gave x of n equal to do of n output is 0. Now we will give 2 into do of n as input. The output will be y of n equal to 2 sin n into do of n and this is equal to 0 using this property. Therefore, for two different inputs, we have the same output. Hence, the system is non-invertible. Okay, we will stop our lecture here due to time limitations. One takeaway from this lecture is that, in general, there is no systematic way to check the invertibility of a system. You simply have to analyze the system. 
in the next video we will see the invertibility of the following systems i hope that all the concepts taught in this video are clear to all of you if you have any doubts feel free to ask them in the comments either me or some other viewer will surely help you out if you found this lecture useful please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel thank you for watching properly and have a great day